Clouds are a wonderfully versatile element in landscape painting. As a compositional element, they can be a counterpart to the landscape or, especially in connection with the light of the sun, can be the focus of attention themselves. Depending on the season, the time of the day or the weather, their color can range from white or gray to dark blue or even orange and can therefore be used to create impressive complementary contrasts or dramatic light-dark contrasts. In this video I will show you how I mix colors for three common lighting moods. And with this, welcome back to Art for Everybody. My name is Evi Steiner Böhm, I'm an artist from Germany and I also have two assistants who are called Pedro and Rosa. And as soon as it comes to oil painting, they are also joined by Angelo, who used to be my teacher 30 years ago. And now let's jump right in. So for my first two examples, I'm going to use two brushes, a filbert bristle brush and a soft dagger brush. As for the paint, I'm going to use oil paints and I have cadmium yellow, titanium white, cyan blue, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna and burnt umber on my palette. As a painting surface, I simply use a thick cardboard which I have primed with burnt sienna acrylic paint. I will work a la prima which means I won't use any thinners. With acrylic paints the whole thing would work in a similar way except that the blending won't work quite as well and you might have to paint in layers to get a similar result. My first example will be a summer sky with the typical fair weather clouds. First, I apply the color for the sky very roughly with a bristle brush. To do this, I mix white with ultramarine blue and a little cyan blue. You might know from landscape painting that the colors get paler and bluer in the distance. That's why, towards the horizon, I mix more white and only cyan into my color, so that the color is not only paler, but also bluer. Then, I also apply the clouds very roughly with white. It doesn't matter here if there is still a little sky color in the brush, because it's always reflected a little in the clouds anyway. Next, I mix a shade of grey for the shadow sides of the clouds from burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. I also add burnt umber for the darker areas in the shadows. The third shadow color is a warm gray tone and for that I simply add a little cadmium yellow to my shadow color. I now use the dagger brush to blend the sky color and thus creating a nice contrast between the smooth sky and the strong brush strokes of the clouds. I also use the same brush to blend the cloud colors into each other, but here I make sure that some of the rough areas from my first application of paint stay untouched and also that I don't smudge the colors into a uniform gray. 
That is always the risk of doing too much of a good thing here. And when that happens, all you can do is wait for the paint to dry and then paint over it again. Finally, I mix white again with a little bit of cadmium yellow and use it to create bright accents on the light side of my clouds. At this point, I put my painting aside to let the paint sink into the ground a bit and I do my other examples in the meantime. My second sky is a stormy sky in which you can no longer see the blue. For this, I simply need different shades of grey, like maybe a yellowish grey, a brownish grey, bluish or very dark grey. And to do this, I simply mix my blue tones with my brown tones in different variations with white. For example, I get the darkest grey when I mix ultramarine blue and burnt umber with very little white and the lightest grey, of course, when I add a lot of white. The only important thing is that I get clear values here between light and dark. And again, I apply this very roughly with a filbert brush. The clouds appear here rather by chance due to the different values. I don't really have a plan here. I simply let it happen. And here too I use the dagger brush to create different zones. Gentle clouds in the background and lively cloud masses in the foreground should alternate and make an interesting painting. Okay, I'm also putting this example aside now so that the color can sink into the ground a little. My third example is a sunset, or it could even be a sunrise, after a thunderstorm. To do this, I now need a third brush, a narrow filbert brush and two more colors namely cadmium orange and crimson. I start with a small filbert brush and apply the white of the sun shining through the clouds very thickly. This is important when you use a colored surface, especially if you do that with acrylics because we want the white real bright and shiny. In case your underground still shimmers through, you have to paint over the white again. Then I gradually mix in more and more cadmium yellow and later cadmium orange and crimson and use these tones to paint the area around the sun.
The sky you see behind the clouds at sunset is a very pale cool blue which I mix from white with a little cyan blue and I add simply more white towards the sun. Next come the clouds, which no longer look grey in the evening light. They look more bluish violet and also appear very dark against the light. For that colour I mix a very dark violet from ultramarine blue, crimson and burnt umber. For the lighter clouds I simply mix in my sky colour to achieve a harmonious colour effect. For the bright areas on the clouds that are illuminated by the sun, I mix the sun color into the clouds and towards the bottom I also add a little crimson so that the clouds near the sun get a reddish shimmer. And then I proceed again as with the other examples. I use the dagger brush to blend the visible sky very softly, very smoothly. And finally I put some white lights near the sun and on the, on the clouds. Now the paint of my uh, former examples has settled in a bit and I can now apply the final corrections again with the dagger brush. And as a la prima paintings you would now leave them as, as they are. Of course if you want to paint more finely you can always add another layer of paint to smooth out any rough spots. But with oil paints make sure that you follow the fat over lean rule, which means that you would then have to add some linseed oil to a second layer of your paint. Or alternatively, you can add a little turpentine as a thinner for the first layer. With acrylics, this would of course be uncomplicated as you can paint on top of each other several times and simply adding more or less water. With this I've come to the end. As always, thank you for being here. I also hope you will stop by next time. Until then, have a very good time. See you soon. <music>